In my last video, I found out that I had low testosterone. I'm below average, <laughs> no. And many of you weren't surprised. Which is concerning because high levels of testosterone are associated with qualities like strength, resilience, and competitive drive. While men with low testosterone are more likely to experience things like weight gain, depression, loss of sex drive, and even erectile dysfunction. And the scariest part is that after the age of 30, testosterone levels in men decrease by an average of 1% every single year. And I just turned 30. Which means if I want to boost my testosterone back to a healthy level, I need to do something drastic. Yeah, uh, not that drastic. But I am gonna be implementing some protocols from the Huberman Lab podcast for the next 30 days. For those that have lower than desired levels of testosterone or if you want to increase testosterone, we have to be breathing properly. So nose breathing, in wakefulness and in sleep promotes all sorts of positive things related to the improvement of gas exchange of carbon dioxide and oxygen in the body. So being a nasal breather can actually positively impact hormones. The second thing, getting anywhere from two to 10 minutes of bright light exposure in your eyes early in the day. And it's well established that deep sleep and getting the proper patterns of slow wave sleep and REM sleep are important for hormone optimization. Make sure you're getting adequate zinc, magnesium, and D3, many of which can be taken in supplementation form. So let's talk about competition. So it is the case that competition itself can increase testosterone. Don't you still have a workout to do? The ideal training protocols for stimulating testosterone release that involve doing six sets of 10 repetitions with about 120 seconds rest in between sets, which even if it requires lightening the weight is pretty darn hard work. While my day one workout is humbling, the day after is equally as humbling. So I was editing through some of yesterday's footage and I found something that is a bit concerning. Let me show you. Look at my body language here, or here, or here. This is not someone who is competing. This is someone who is deflated or defeated. This is low T. And if I want to find a way to boost this, I'm going to have to learn to actually compete. If I want to see actual noticeable improvement with my testosterone levels, I need to make sure I'm being disciplined with all the protocols, especially the easy ones. And seeing as how I struggled to compete early on, I think it's time to raise the stakes. Yo, I want to play one-on-one -on -one again. And if you win, I'm going to give you a $1,000. Okay. Deal? That's a deal. With my money at stake, I'm hoping this helps me lock in for the next 30 days and really see some noticeable improvements in my next blood test. I was researching average testosterone levels based on age just to see where I was at. And when I plugged in my numbers into the graph, for my age, I am just above the 90th percentile for testosterone levels, which means that 90% of people my own age have higher levels of testosterone than I do. And if that wasn't bad enough, I took the age and I moved it over to see where I'd be at. And I would still be in the 70th to 80th percentile if I was 88 years old. 
88. It's one thing to be low for your own age. It's another thing to be low for the senior center. How did this happen? Why is this happening to my body? I'm a pretty healthy person. Not like 90th percentile? How? So just as there are behaviors that can increase testosterone, there are behaviors that can decrease testosterone. Things like illness, apnea, and becoming a parent. Expecting fathers have an almost 50% decrease in testosterone levels. Peaks in testosterone cause individuals to seek sex, not promote parenting. Whereas reductions in testosterone move individuals of both sexes toward parenting behavior and less toward reproductive behavior. Hillary, uh -huh. you're not pregnant, are you? No. Okay. What? Thank God. Oh my gosh, no, 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 sorry, that's not. So testosterone promotes sex-seeking behavior. When people participated in sex, they had 70% increases in testosterone. The salutogenesis model. As much as I look for answers on why my testosterone is so low, I can't really seem to find a solid answer. So I decide to call it a night and maybe try again tomorrow. The males that have higher testosterone forage further and will fight harder and will promote competitive interactions. And I think it's starting to make sense. This year, I have been complacent. I'm happy with my marriage. I'm content with how much I'm seeing my friends and my family, which is all really good things. But on the other side of that, I have become less driven and less motivated in multiple areas of my life, but specifically with my health. And I feel like getting this blood test back was the wake up call that I needed to really start taking ownership of some healthy habits. And one of the easiest healthy habits I can think of is by taking AG1 by Athletic Greens. I take AG1 by Athletic Greens every single morning and it gives me 75 different vitamins, minerals, whole food source superfoods. And what I've found is that it not only gives me all this nutritional benefits, but it also feels healthy. And so I find that taking it in the morning is something that I look forward to. It makes me feel accomplished in a weird way. And it has this like sort of domino effect of pushing me towards other healthy habits just from feeling healthy and feeling positive about the choices and the decisions that I'm making in my morning. With your first purchase right now, they're giving one year of free vitamin D as well as five free travel packs. So click the link down below, take control of your nutrition, get those healthy habits. All right, back to the video. The trickiest part of this challenge is not knowing if the effort that I'm putting in is actually having an impact on my testosterone levels. So all I can do is try to stay disciplined and keep pushing myself, even when things get hard. People think that the opposite of testosterone is estrogen, but it's not. The opposite of testosterone is prolactin, which makes us feel quiescent and not in pursuit of things, etc. The major effect of testosterone is to make effort feel good. When effort feels good, life just gets way better. And after the first two weeks of this challenge, I start to notice that effort I'm exerting in my workouts starts to extend into other areas of my life. Wow. And while things go really well for the first two weeks, by day 20, the initial excitement of this challenge feels like it's starting to wear off. Currently 10.53 and I have done nothing today. I'm just having a very unmotivated, lazy day today. What's even worse is I know what will help me get out of this. I know what to do to make myself feel better and wake up and get going, but I just don't want to do it. I just do not want to do it. <sighs> I need to do it. I need to do it. All right, let's just let's just do it. Get it over with. Get this day back on track. Here we go. <sighs> and while some problems are quick fixes, other ones are a bit more complicated. For instance, pull-up day. 
Pull-ups are my least favorite exercise, and with the goal of six sets of 10, I know that I am in trouble. And to add some competition, I brought my brother Brendan along, who just so happens to be really good at pull-ups. And while I'm struggling by set number two, Brendan is cruising through his sets with ease. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> Someone's unhappy. That absolutely sucked. I hated every second of that. Literally every second, I hated that. It's like one thing to be bad at pull-ups, which I have always been bad at pull-ups, but having like everyone just like walk by and see me struggle and be bad at pull-ups, like that really bothered me. And it just made me like want to quit. I wanted to quit like every set as like some weird way to like preserve my ego or something I guess and that's just like so unhelpful I'm like trying to retrain my brain how to compete when everything in my head is like stop 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 I'm sorry shut up Siri if I want to compete and I want to give effort to something I need to cut out whatever that was because that is not helpful that is not helpful at all with my emotions getting the best of me yet again I can't help but worry about how I'm going to handle the pressure of a game with $1,000 on the line. So I go looking for answers from one of the best competitors of all time. All right, what I try to do is just try to be still and understand that emotions come and go. The important thing is to accept them all, to embrace them all, and then you can choose to do with them what you want versus being controlled by emotion. You think about game winning free throws and people go to the free throw line and they're nervous about it. Well, what are you really nervous about? If you unpack that, okay, you, you're nervous that you're gonna miss the shot. You're gonna be embarrassed because thousands of people, millions of people see you miss the shot. People are gonna talk bad about you, right? And so you're looking at it and you go, are those things even important? You know, what you do on Monday, it's fantastic, but then Tuesday is a bad day. So are we just supposed to live our lives like this the whole time? You know, yeah. versus just staying like this and understanding that it's really just a journey of, evolution every day to say okay it's okay to fail and then it gives you the confidence to go for it we are one day away from the big final basketball game and we are two days away from the final workout and i am just thinking through those two things how bad i did on both of those things on day one and i'm thinking about the idea of brendan winning this basketball game gloating, celebrating, taking my money, taking $1,000 from me. And as I'm thinking about that, I feel like something is just like switched in my brain where I'm going to fight. I'm going to work as hard as I can and I am going to win. My strategy for both challenges is to stay in the moment. Whenever I failed previously, I would get down on myself and beat myself up before it was over. But if I can just take these one rep, one possession at a time, never quitting, never getting discouraged, make or miss, keep fighting. One more. <sighs> 
Then, up one, I jam my thumb on a take to the basket. And it did not feel good. Whenever I feel pain or discomfort, my instinct is to let up and detach from what I'm doing. And that is exactly what I did. Soon enough, I am completely in my head. And with $1,000 on the line, I need to get my focus back and fast. I can do this. I can do this. I'm not dropping weight. I can do it. If I want to have any hope of winning this game, I just need to lock in one possession at a time. Keep going. Keep going. Oh. I did it. I literally just did all 10. I didn't drop away once. I just kept telling myself over and over again, like, don't sit down. Don't lay down. Don't like wallow in how bad it feels. Just like breathe and think about the next set. Think about how it's going to be easy. Think about how you can do it just one set at a time. And it literally worked. Like, I feel like I'm like pushing myself like harder than I've pushed myself in a long time. And it just feels like it's there. It's like there. You know, but it's just a matter of actually like doing it, like believing it. Dude, I need to just like bring this to like all the areas of my life, you know? I can't believe I just did that. With the final challenges out of the way, it's time to finally see if I've made any improvements with my testosterone. This is day one. And that's day 30. Oh my gosh, it actually worked. It actually worked. I am just short of the 50th percentile. I'm actually average. Now I just gotta keep going. I gotta do like a, a blood test in three months and see how it goes from there. Ah, let's go buddy, let's go.